The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have arrived. We have arrived at Good Friday and the Tridium and the final events of the Passion of our Lord. Some of you will recall that on the fifth Sunday in Lent in Series B, the epistle was Hebrews 5, 1 to 10. And so two of those verses are part of our epistle lesson for this Friday that we call good. And in addition to those two verses from chapter 5, those are verses 7 and 9, we have from uh, chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. And I would like to suggest to you as we look at the text that the theme of this text should be Jesus, our compassionate high priest. Now let's just notice a few things here in terms of the overall structure. Here are your uh, verses from chapter 4 and then fast forwarding to chapter 7. And notice that there is, you know, no, no antecedent because the antecedent happens to be Jesus in the context of this part of chapter 5. But I think it works very well here because the antecedent comes back here to high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. And we have a high priest. And this is the high priest that we have. So, in a way, this is simply a continuation of the, the description that the author of Hebrews has with Jesus the compassionate high priest. Now, the, the language of compassion here comes from this word right here. Sum pathesai. And, and as we know, that, that compassion is to suffer with. And that's what Jesus does. He is able to suffer with our weaknesses. And you can see that down here below... Um, as you move to the text, move the text down below here. Let's see here if we can do this. Yeah, it, 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 we do not have, it's a negative, who is not able to sympathize with our weaknesses. And really, in a way, the climax for that is this main verb here. He learned um, obedience through suffering. And there's the suffering. And that's that, I think if I were preaching on this text, I would connect these two. Now, j just look at, at uh, the, uh, the main verbs. Hold fast to the confession. Here. You know, for we do not have a high priest. Let us then enter, therefore, to the throne of grace. And Kleinig, and I encourage you to read his little excursus on this. He translates this, normally it's, I always translate it with confidence, parasias, but he translates it as freedom of speech. And I, I'm not going to read or kind of rehearse his entire excursus with you here. I'll let that be up to you to read. But it's worth your time, and that might be a place that you might want to spend some time preaching on. Um, but I mean, the, the, again, the main verbs, let us hold fast the confession, for we do not have a high priest. Let us enter in with, with freedom of speech, with confidence. He learned from suffering and, um, uh, and having reached perfection, he is able to all those who are obedient to him to give an eternal salvation. Now, that, that could be your theme right there. That could be your theme. And I think that, that theme there is really, again, an, uh, um, a theme that really does, in a sense, 
illustrate the fact that Jesus is the great compassionate high priest. You know, it, it, he became, for all those who are obedient, the, the cause of an eternal salvation. Now, that's the point of Good Friday. Okay, so that's a little overview. Let's go back and look at some of the particulars here. And as I said, we, we certainly dealt with the context of this and, and exegeted these two verses um, for the fifth Sunday in, um, in Lent. <clears throat> okay. Now, he starts by saying, therefore, we have a great high priest, who is, and, and, I, and I think just about everybody translates this the same, same way, who has gone through or who has passed through the heavens, gone through the heavens, you know. And so the, 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 we start here with, with the, the conclusion, with the, in a sense, the exaltation, you know, that he has passed through the heavens. Um, and he's named, the great high priest is named, and this is important, Jesus, the Son of God. I mean, an incredible title. Savior, cause of an eternal salvation down here. And the Son of God, of course, is one of the great titles of Jesus in the, Old, in the uh, New Testament. Um, so this, this is the confession that we hold fast to, that Jesus is the great high priest. And, of course, this suggests sacrifice, and that is what we are celebrating on this Good Friday, is the sacrifice of Christ. And in a sense, what you have here now is a description, and, and continuing down here, of who this high priest is. For we do not have, unlike, and, and you know that there's an interlude here uh, concerning Aaron the high priest. You know, for we do not have a high priest who is not able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Now that, that, I think that, that notion there of weaknesses brings in um, physical weaknesses, the weaknesses that come from persecution. Uh, I believe that this, this uh, audience here in Hebrews is a group that is about to undergo a severe persecution, and the concern there is giving up their confession of going back. I think they're, they're related to the temple of going back to the temple sacrifices and giving up the true high priest and the true sacrifice that is Christ himself. So I think we have a, a real kind of crisis here of faith, and that's why he's saying hold on to that confession. And I think one of the weaknesses here is to kind of succumb to the persecution and give up that confession. That, that confession. And, and here's, you know, how does he have compassion, you know, sympathize with our weaknesses? Because he has undergone temptation in all things in the same manner. And, of course, this is what distinguishes him from us without sin. I, I'm sure you've, you've thought about this, thought about this in uh, Lent 1 when you preached on the temptations. And not everybody maybe would say it this way. Some might even disagree with it. But to be tempted is not to sin. To give in to temptation is to sin. So Jesus is tempted as we are, but he does what we cannot do. And that is he can withstand the temptation without sin. And remember the great temptation uh, at the beginning of this season, if you wanted to go back to that, and I think you could if you were preaching on this, is to grab the glory before the cross. And I think that's a, that's a temptation that we have as well. And so... We're going to enter to the throne of grace, and, you know, I, I think the throne of grace, you know, I mean, it's certainly the heavenly places, but it's where Christ is. And so I think he's calling them to make this confession of Jesus, the high priest, the Son of God, in the context of the church's life, which is, of course, in the context of the church's liturgy, in order that we might receive mercy. Now there's mercy and that takes us back to the compassion. And we might find grace in time of need. And look at the, this is a beautiful alliteration there. 
Eo, Eo, in time of need. Now, mercy and grace, these are the, these are the, the, the great gifts that we receive in the liturgy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then mercy, which comes from the grace and the peace. So, in, in a way, having known what kind of high priest we are here, this is what we can do. And then, and then we do have a furthering of, you know, a, a description here of this high priest, and that is that who in the days of his flesh, and again, I think that this is, you know, talking about when he was tempted, offering, remember we said this last time, you got to bring, come down and get the verb, offering both prayers and supplications um, to the one who is able to save him from death. And I think we're thinking here of the Garden of Gethsemane, and that, of course, is taking place on this night in which he was betrayed. Um, with great cries and tears. Um, so this, this describes sort of the height of Christ's suffering. And it describes how he has been tempted in all things, you know, in every manner, without sin. And how he sympathizes with us. And that the Father heard him uh, because of his reverence, you know. And although he was a son, one can certainly hear the Galatians uh, 3 and 4 here coming through. He's a son. He learned... And look at how important this word is, obedience. Uh, he learned obedience from what he suffered. From what he suffered. And here's his suffering. Here's his suffering, his being tempted in all things without sin. Um, that's how he learned obedience. And here you have the whole notion, and I think this would be a great thing to preach on in the gospel, which I think is John 19, and even Isaiah 52 and 53, which is the Old Testament lesson, the faithfulness of Christ, his obedience unto death, his faithful death on our behalf. This is the Philippian language, which in our chapel this week we have been listening to. And having been brought to perfection... There's the it, it is finished. It is brought to an end. Here's, here's your eschatology. Here's your eschatology, having brought to an He became, for all those who are obedient to him, for all those who are obedient to him, the cause of an everlasting salvation. So it is through his suffering that comes to completion that because of his obedience, we too might be obedient. Um, let me get that last verse translated, right? Let me, I'm looking here at Kleinig. And having been made perfect, became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. For all who obey him. Okay? Kleinig puts this, who became, you know, I like, I like putting it at the end because it's the climax. Okay, now, obviously, as you've heard from me many times before, I think you should preach on the gospel. But this is an incredible illustration of what the suffering was like. It's a theological interpretation of the gospel. And so I would use this as a way of opening up the meaning of the suffering because that is what the author of Hebrews is doing. And I think it should be noted here, I think this is here, yeah. If we come scroll down here, this is from Van Oya, who I'm very fond of. Um, I, I think this is really quite something. You, you do have here Christ's high priesthood, and down here, Christ's high priesthood. And of course, we're taking verses 7 to 9, so we're just taking a, a smidgen of this. And the first part here is the congruence of Christ's priesthood with Aaron's tradition. This was, of course, our Lent 5 text. 
So you can really see here from this little structure that Christ's high priesthood, which of course is all about his sacrifice, which is what we read in the Gospel of John in John 19, which is what Good Friday is all about. This is, in a sense, the height of, um, of the entire church year. And as we, we begin the, the observance of, of the, the highest holy days that we have in our church life, we remember how Christ is the high priest and how in offering up his body, the one that went through the heavens, um, as he enters the holy place, which is his cross, and he makes that a holy of holies, we, we st stand there in awe, with grief, with sorrow, and yet with expectant joy, knowing that it is only through death, through suffering, that Jesus enters into his glory. And so we give thanks on this Good Friday for the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ is our great high priest who has offered up his body as a sacrifice and that in his blood we have the forgiveness of sins. As the author of Hebrews says, for without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. The Lord be with you during these three holy days.